Okay. Hello, this is David Sloan Wilson for Evolution, This View of Life, the magazine that approaches anything and everything from an evolutionary perspective. I'm talking today with Eva Vandenbroek, who is going to serve as editor of the economic section of the, of the magazine. Welcome, Eva. Hi, David. And uh, Eva, tell me a little, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you became interested in uh, economics from an evolutionary perspective. Well, um, I made sort of a detour to get to the economics part, but evolution was where it all started, actually. Okay. So let me start there. Um, I live in Amsterdam, and I studied artificial intelligence. And that was when I became interested in um, evolutionary simulations. So little, uh, constructing little agents that interact with each other on the computer and that reproduce. And... Um, well, for, actually for my master's thesis, I went to Berlin to do research at the Max Planck Institute. And there I worked on a, a really great topic on sexual selection in birds. Okay, great. And that was, yeah, that wasn't only a, like a, the best uh, small talk topic ever. It was also really interesting, I thought. Um, it amounted to little birds. Um, one of the birds would be singing, the other bird would be hearing the other one, listening to the first singing bird. And they would evaluate each other. And the female birds would pick the birds, the male birds, that were singing the most rhythmically. Because what we hypothesized was actually that evolution would take care of sorting out the, well, the, the kind of songs that would sort of be an indicator of the mate quality of the male birds. Uh -huh. And we hypothesized that rhythm would be one of them. So we let that evolve and we let these little birds reproduce and in the end it turned out that the songs became rhythmical and then I was really fascinated by evolution as a concept <laughs> and birds too. Um, well, that, I guess that explains my, my interest or that got me started being interested in evolution. Right, where's the, where's, where does the economics exactly, connection Exactly, the then? economics part. Um, after my master's project in Berlin, I... Um, I looked for a PhD position and it was one available in, well, in between economics and biology. And I figured that by the time I became a sort of biologist. And um, so I started working between these two topics, more or less. I started working on evolutionary theoretical models um, of human behavior that was economic behavior, but not economic in the sense that it only had to do with money. It was economic in the sense that um, we were looking for explanations of behavior of people in a sort of rational, but not always rational sense. Uh -huh. um, well, the, it was actually, it was quite hard to work together or to work in between these biologists and economists, but it was great fun. Uh -huh. uh, we had a lot of discussion about the word evolution, actually, because we both first meant something completely different. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but after a while, we understood each other, and I got real working on um, things like reciprocity. Um, one second. My computer wanted to restart. Um, things like indirect and direct reciprocity, um, on group formation issues, on... Um, uh, punishments and whether uh, in com if two groups are in competition with each other, right? Um, <laughs> whether the most cooperative group would uh, uh, would be the best. Right. Well, what? Uh, so tell us about uh, so some of your current research, where, there, where all of this has led, and then we can talk about the broad field of, of uh, economics from an evolutionary perspective and what we hope to do with, uh, with the economic section of uh, evolution, this view of life. Great. Um, what I'm working on right now is uh, two things, actually. Um, I'm working on social norms and how social norms influence behavior. Uh -huh. um, and on the other hand, I'm working now f um, for an applied research center institute where I'm actually studying um, health promotion issues. Oh, okay. So that's sort of a new turn from what I've been doing so far. I, I decided I wanted to go beyond experimental economics and economics in the lab, behavior in the lab, right. to what people actually do in their real lives. Yeah. Um, 
So right now I'm working on a project with school canteens and we're thinking about how to arrange uh, the food in school canteens so as to make people, school children in fact, uh, make healthier choices. Uh-huh. That's a good behavioral economics topic. That's real behavioral economics, yep. Right. Okay, well, let me actually just spend a few minutes talking about where uh, I'm coming from on the subject of economics, and then we can quickly get to, uh, uh, to uh, what we hope to achieve with the uh, economic section of evolution, this view of life. Yeah. Um, I uh, um, run a, a think tank called the Evolution Institute, and, uh, which started in 2007. And uh, in 2008, when the financial crisis hit, I was encouraged to think about economics from an evolutionary perspective and actually got funding from the National Evolutionary uh, Synthesis Center, which is uh, one of NSF's largest um, evolution-related centers, to hold a conference, which we called the Nature of Regulation, um, how evolution can inform uh, the regulation of large-scale human social interaction. And in the process of organizing that uh, conference, which involved uh, really working with dozens of um, of uh, people across many disciplines, uh, I just got a total immersion course in economics as it has developed over the course of the, uh, since the 19th century, well before, ever since Malthus and Adam Smith, uh, a topic that's thoroughly entwined with, uh, with evolution throughout its history, and yet today is dominated by neoclassical economics, which uh, has its own origins more in Newtonian physics than in evolution. Um, evolution per se. A very complicated history, uh, which is of course true for any major um, major topic. And then on the basis of that conference, uh, we got another uh, collaboration with the, the National Evolution Synthesis Center for a two-year working project on integrating economics and evolution. And this involves working with dozens more people and holding workshops periodically, and Eva was at the first uh, um, workshop. So uh, I feel that uh, I'm no longer an amateur on the topic of uh, economics from an evolutionary perspective. I think that uh, there is just a paradigmatic difference between the evolutionary perspective and the currently dominant position of economics. And there is just so much that can be done to improve uh, economic processes of all sorts. And uh, it expands into so many areas of uh, policy it is so interdisciplinary, which is the very opposite of economics in its current state, which is one of the most encapsulated disciplines that you will find anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, does, it does not surprise me that you had a hard time talking to the economists at the beginning. Uh -huh. But as you know, the people that are involved in this come from a melting pot of disciplines, uh, from uh, psychology, anthropology, biology, economics, political science, and we all are speaking the common language of, uh, of um, evolution. And so I think that what's so exciting about uh, the magazine in general, but especially for the economic section, is that we have this huge um, academic network of people that's already interacting. And the magazine gives us a chance to communicate to the general public and also to provide a forum at all levels so that we can take these issues and we can debate them and there's much to yeah. debate. Uh, it's not as if we have the, you know, the final word by any means, uh, but, these, uh, but these issues can be discussed uh, in a way that anybody can listen in and contribute through Evolution This View of Life in addition to the more academic forums that we are, uh, uh, that we are um, also organizing. So very exciting that, uh, that we're doing this and I really appreciate uh, uh, your willingness to become involved as the uh, editor of this section. Well I got really enthusiastic from the, the just the plan and the view of the website. It looks like a great plan really. Great. Okay so uh, we'll get started. The magazine's going to launch uh, very soon and, uh, and uh, um, we uh, uh, appreciate input from all sources, and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this goes. It's very much an experiment in progress, uh, but uh, but I'm sure it's going to be lots of fun. So yeah. uh, thank you very much, and I look forward to interacting with you more on the pages of Evolution: This View of Life. <laughs> so do I.